We are so pleased to have Dr. Rajani Kata. She's the author of nine books and over 100 medical publications. She is the author of GLOW, The Dermatologist's Guide to a Whole Foods Younger Skin Diet, and frequently lectures on the link between diet and dermatology. She serves on the voluntary faculty of both Baylor College of Medicine and McGovern Medical School, and is a frequent contributor to media outlets. I'm so excited already by the program that we've had this morning. Just really exciting to see all of us approaching this from different perspectives, different angles, and promoting peace and wellness. And, and my piece of this today is to talk about the relationship between nutrition and skin. One of the reasons I became so interested in this, so I've been a dermatologist for close to 25 years, and I just, you know, in the early years would get so many questions about the link between nutrition and healthy skin. And with the rise of social media, we've seen a lot of misconceptions also come about in this area. And so one of the reasons I've written publications about this is to really educate myself first uh, before I started talking about this. And there are some really interesting lessons here. When we talk about the skin, one of the things that um, I've seen a lot of misconceptions, popularity, popping up about collagen supplements right now, that's something that's really big. And so the question that um, I really asked myself years ago was, how do we support the collagen in our skin? Because if you think about collagen, collagen is the building block. It, you know, it supports our skin, it provides structure, it support. But it's not just our skin. Um, it's really, collagen plays an important role in our blood vessels, and that plays an important role in heart disease and high blood pressure. Because what you really want are those flexible, elastic collagen, collagen that can bounce back. And so, you know, some of the questions that I would get from my patients are, we know we're getting UV radiation all the time. Is there any way to help our skin resist those damaging effects of UV radiation, apart from sunscreen? And why is it that some elderly individuals who eat a healthy diet actually appear younger? I find that really interesting because this was a really interesting study to me where they actually took over 2,700 elderly Dutch individuals. And what they did was they measured their wrinkles digitally in photographs, and what they wanted to see was what kind of food had they been eating for the decades previously. And what they found was that those individuals who were more adherent to the Dutch healthy guidelines had fewer wrinkles. Whereas if they had a diet that was dominant in red meat and snacks, what they found was that they had more facial wrinkles. Um, so interesting. And I really thought there were a lot of lessons there when we talk about the power of food. And if you talk about skin aging, I think we all know that it relates to things like wrinkling and loss of elasticity. And when we're talking about, um, I have a saying, which is how do we translate the science to the dinner plate? And so if you start with the science of, um, of aging skin, so you can think of your skin, or I like to think of my skin, as being like a house. And so there are a lot of potential threats to your house. And just starting with the fact, um, if you think about free radicals, Free radicals are those compounds that are produced not just from UV radiation, they're produced from a lot of the activities of daily living and pollution. And so there's a process called oxidation, and that produces free radicals. And free radicals are essentially like hailstones that start to attack the roof of your house and start to damage it over time. You can also have inflammation, and inflammation is your body's natural repair processes that are starting to go out of control. And that's kind of like when you have a tiny leak in the roof of your house and you hire somebody to come fix it, but by the time you're done, you end up with this giant hole in your roof. That's inflammation, repair processes that are just going out of control. And then you can have glycation. And glycation is a process where you produce new compounds. And these new compounds are sort of like termites because they glob onto the walls of your house and they start to cause sagging. So just like advanced glycation end products, 
start to glob onto your collagen and start to, uh, start to cause sagging, that's a process called glycation. And so the three major processes that age the skin, I think of them as constant hail, repair processes gone haywire, and then those sagging walls. And from a scientific standpoint, that's what we call oxidation, major and minor inflammation, and glycation, or OMG, which is very <laughs> handy. <laughs> But I think it's really interesting because the human body is really, it's just beautiful the way it's designed. Because we know that your skin is under siege every minute of every day, UV radiation, stress, just breathing. There's a lot that that starts to cause damage. But because your skin is under siege, it has so many of these built-in defense and repair mechanisms. And the right foods, we now have lots and lots of research showing that the right foods can actually support and supercharge those systems. So when I talk about that OMG processes, every one of those steps in those pathways can be impacted by our diet. And when I say diet, I'm not just talking about an individual um, component of the diet. It might be your overall dietary pattern or it might be specific foods, or it might be specific nutrients, or it might be specific compounds. And when I talk about, okay, what can the right foods do for our skin? Well, right away, you know, we talk about that hail that's constantly hitting your skin. Those are free radicals. There are certain foods can, that can just quench and neutralize those free radicals. There are also inflammatory processes that start to upregulate enzymes in our body. I call those enzymes scissor enzymes because they start to cut away at the collagen and elastic fibers that are supporting your skin. Well, there are foods that can just counteract those enzymes. The right foods, especially broccoli, can activate DNA repair systems. There are also foods that have been shown to strengthen the skin barrier. And we know that there are lots of foods and dietary patterns that can promote the growth of good gut microbes. And those good gut microbes are really important because they produce substances that start to strengthen the lining of the gut and that also start to strengthen the skin barrier. So a lot of really beneficial impacts from food. So start with that first question. How do you make your skin more resistant to sun damage? So yes, sunscreen's fantastic, but there's always some UV radiation that's going to make it through. How does your skin counteract that UV radiation that makes it through? Well, there was one fantastic study that looked at tomatoes and tomato paste. So we talk about oxidation. Well, there are some foods that are rich in antioxidants that can start to limit the actual damage that's caused by UV radiation. In this one study, the volunteers had 10 weeks where they ate tomato paste daily. And at the end of that 10 weeks, they might before have had a really quick sunburn, but after 10 weeks of eating that tomato paste, it took them much longer for their skin to sunburn. So their skin had actually become stronger and more resistant to the effects of that UV radiation. And then when they did skin biopsies, they also had less skin collagen damage. And the way that it does this is, again, I said that the skin has these amazing defense and repair systems. Well, we have antioxidants that always live in our skin, but they're constantly being used up. So if you're able to eat those, you can replenish those antioxidants. And it's not just tomatoes. So they've had wonderful research studies in human intervention studies where it's also been shown from green tea, cocoa flavanols, pomegranate, and others. And if you look at this same question in laboratory studies, we've seen it from not just tomatoes, but substances that are found in raspberries, soy, turmeric, onions, grapes, green tea. So a lot of those foods that are really um, the basis of a plant-based diet that have these really powerful compounds in them. We talk 
you know, about redness, but it's not just visible signs of sun damage, it's also even things like reduced DNA damage and reduced markers of inflammation. So a uh, great study where they talk about some of these. And I do want to make a point here because I get this question, well, if a little bit of antioxidants is good, what about taking more? But actually we found that the ideal dose is physiologic. So that's the dose that's found in whole foods. You cannot just take a supplement with really high doses and get the same benefit. In fact, I like to, I have the saying that antioxidants are like salting in your food. A little uh, too much salt can be even worse than not enough. If you get those really high antioxidant supplement doses, you can actually start to cause more oxidation and more damage. Um, in fact, we found with large human studies that sometimes those really high dose supplements can actually increase your risk of cancer. The ideal dose seems to be that physiologic dose, so that dose that's found in foods. This was one study where women who used a supplement that had these high doses, vitamin C, E, zinc, selenium, beta carotene, they actually had higher rates of skin cancer. So I'm really careful with my patients to say, you've gotta be careful about those supplements. You have to know exactly what you're getting, which is why we rely so heavily on foods. So I talked about inflammation, and there is, um, this is a study that's been published, and they call it the Dietary Inflammatory Index, where they took 1,900 studies, and what they wanted to see were what were some of the foods that reduced markers of inflammation. So there are markers like C-reactive protein, which you can just take a blood test for, and it's a marker of inflammation. And individuals who have high levels of C-reactive protein have high, high your risk of heart disease. Well, if you know that that high level of C-reactive protein indicates high inflammation that can be damaging, are there any foods or dietary patterns that can start to reduce levels of C-reactive protein? And this study looked at over 1,900 studies and put together what's known as a dietary inflammatory index to really mark out what were the foods that were able to reduce those levels of inflammation. And what they found was that there are certain foods, certain nutrients, and certain phytonutrients that are really powerfully anti-inflammatory. And I'm gonna highlight that in a moment. Um, we talk about the importance of anti-inflammatory foods also because I mentioned those enzymes that start to snip away at your collagen and elastic fibers. Some of the foods that can block those enzymes, green tea, white tree, and pomegranate, and if you're looking to block the elastases, ginger. So some wonderful foods that can help protect your collagen. And then we talked about glycation. I talk about sugar sag because if you have higher levels of blood sugar, what happens is that sugar combines with protein and it creates new compounds called advanced glycation end products, or AGES for short. And I like to think of that as caramel. So if you think about your collagen, it is a beautiful, it, collagen is essentially a net. There are all these collagen fibers. And the reason it's so powerful is because it's a very strong framework, but it's also a net, so it's very flexible. That's what makes it so amazing. So if you have sugar and butter and you put that together, you create caramel. Well, you can imagine what happens when you add that caramel to your net. You start, it starts to get brittle and then it starts to sag. Well, that's what advanced glycation end products do to your collagen. Makes it brittle, makes it harder to repair, eventually starts to sag it. So you have to think about how to avoid those foods or those eating patterns that increase your levels of blood sugar. And we call that avoiding sugar spikes. So, if you're taking the science to the dinner plate, one of the things that you know, really emphasizes a skin healthy diet is a healthy diet because you're protecting the collagen in your skin and you're protecting the collagen in your blood vessels. So the three basics of how do you do this, eat power, stop sugar spikes, and stop skin sabotage. So when we say eat power, that's eat foods that are rich in powerful nutrients. I already mentioned antioxidants, eating foods that are rich in antioxidants. I also love herbs and spices because they're a triple threat. They are naturally very rich in antioxidants, but they're also one of the most anti-inflammatory foods out there, and they also can counteract glycation. 
And then power carbs. Um, we've already heard from Dr. Davis that carbs are not bad. What you really want to focus are those powerful carbohydrates that are rich in powerful nutrients that are rich in fiber. Also power fats, and then probiotics and prebiotic foods to help support your gut microbes. So eat power, those powerful nutrients, and um, I just mentioned those uh, six categories, and I mentioned that spices and herbs are really a triple threat. When you talk about stopping sugar spikes, we like to talk about the right carbs, the right amount, and the importance of fiber. Of course, everybody's different, and people have different responses to the same exact food, so that's something that has to be considered. I also want to highlight stop skin sabotage for a moment because we definitely know that those foods that are high in added sugars or those processed carbohydrates can start to increase your blood sugar levels, which can be so damaging to the skin. But those advanced glycation end products that I have likened to termites eating the walls of your house, you can also eat those directly. So they are, it's not just that your body produces them in response to added sugar, you can also eat them in the foods that you choose. And one of the worst foods in terms of high levels of those ages are browned meats, especially broiled, grilled, and fried meats. So I love this, um, research study because they really measured how many advanced glycation products were found in foods, and the highest one was bacon. <laughs> um, and it was interesting because I said broiled, grilled, and fried meats. So I really wondered, well, what happens if you roast your vegetables? Does that increase your, the rate of ages? No. If you look at the very bottom, it's very hard to even see that blue line. Grilled vegetables, roasted vegetables, they have hardly any of these ages. So it really just applying to meat, not to vegetables. In summary, if you think about that oxidation, inflammation, glycation, to combat that, you really want to focus on those foods that are naturally rich in antioxidants, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, spices and herbs, and then anti-inflammatory foods, very similar profile to those antioxidant foods. And then remember that role of glycation and try to avoid those foods that are going to promote glycation. The power of food, the power of broccoli. And um, if you're interested in learning more about the science behind this, I did write this article that summarizes a lot of what I just talked about. And this is open access. If you went to my website, you can find it or you can just Google anti-wrinkle diet and my last name, K-A-T-T-A. And it talks about nutritional strategies to combat those three forces. Um, and if you're interested in learning more, um, well, here's some of the references. But I also link to those references on my website, which is listed here, so katamd.com. And shout out to um, Food Photos are by myself and my um, former assistant, Mia Wei, who was also um, involved in the food photography. So I thank you so much for your attention. And I'm so excited to learn more throughout the course of the day myself.